Hi, today's video is sort of a testing video of a Newtone CP95 cassette players. And didn't you know, cassette tapes are making a comeback. They apparently, uh, younger people think cassettes are really cool nowadays. Those of us who lived through the days of cassettes before CDs know they're all right, but they're not that cool. All that fast forwarding and rewinding trying to find a song, that gets really annoying after a while. Anyway, uh, I have a customer who has an earlier in-wall cassette player. He has a CP90. Surprisingly enough, that came out around 1990. And uh, it's broken, and the cost to repair it is too high. And he was looking for an alternative, and I looked around to see what I have. And I have a couple new old stock CP95s on the shelf, and he's interested in one of them. So I told him I would take it out and make sure it works properly and so forth. That's what we're going to do here. So a quick overview of the CP95. It was the second slim wall factor cassette player that Newtone used to make. Newtone's first cassette players came out in the early 1970s and they were big wall units. They were like 12 by 14 and they folded down or it was a big 12 by 14 plate in the wall and they were kind of big and obnoxious and huge back in the day. And then when the 3000 2003 came out in 1984. A few years after that, they came out with the CP90, and the CP90 was the first slimline design, much like the CP95. CP90 was a, a black unit with a smoke glass storage door, and it was a very 80s looking unit. And the CP95, which was only available in white, it came out in, surprisingly, 1995, and it was styled to match the newly introduced IA M3303, which has this sort of same general styling with the rounded corners and the long horizontal grooves in the faceplate and so on. And it was a reasonably popular unit, but cassettes started to wane and it actually was in production all the way through probably the early 2000s and then sales dropped off and you didn't see them much anymore. I don't know exactly when it was officially discontinued, but it had a decent long run and a lot of people still play cassettes. We repair a lot of cassette players because uh, there's a group of customers that like to play their cassettes and it works well for them so you know why not. So the CP95 it's an auto reverse cassette deck. We have a storage area right here behind the door and there's enough room you can put four cassettes in there in their cases or perhaps six if they're out of their cases. It has magnetic latches on the door just like the 3, 000, or 3303 did, so it latches closed, which is kind of nice. You've got your cassette door here. You have fast forward and rewind with your eject button and two little red LED arrow lights to show which direction it's playing is because it is an auto reverse cassette deck. I have this set up oh and then on the back of the unit there isn't a whole lot on the back of one of these. You have the cassette player mechanism here which is all encased in metal to keep dirt and dust and sheetrock dust out of it so it doesn't get gummed up. And over here we have the power supply preamp board there's one single audio connection here, which is the yellow connector. This is a monaural cassette player because it's going into a monaural intercom system, so you don't need stereo. And I have this hooked up on, it's just a standard AC power supply, so it's all ready to go. The setup we have here today, because we're actually going to listen to it, is... I have it set up to a 3003 over here because that's period appropriate. That's what the customer who's buying this has, so that seems like the way to go. The 3003 has just been rebuilt recently, like 30 minutes ago, so it's in good working order. But this is really about the CP95. Now, when you test a cassette player, one of the things you have to have is cassettes because, you know, otherwise, what's the point? So when I need to test a cassette player, what do I do? Well, I reach onto the shelf and I pull out one of my cassette cases. This is a small one. I have many of these and some of them are three or twice as big or maybe three times as big as this one is. And yes, these are vintage cassette cases from when I was in high school. And yes, I have all my cassettes. I do add to them periodically when I find something really good at a good price, like a dollar, but uh, these, this one is pretty much all original. Ooh, look inside. It's 70s orange. How cool is that? So this is 
These are some of the ones that I use most often when I'm working on someone's cassette player or I'm working on an IM4006 because these are songs that I've been listening to since they came out in the 70s. And one of the advantages when you work on a cassette player to make sure it plays correctly, like at the right speed and it doesn't have too much wow or flutter. And if you're not sure what wow and flutter are, you can Google it and find out. And if you listen to songs that you've been listening to for, say, 40 years or so, uh, you know exactly what they're supposed to sound like. And sure, I have technical equipment and measuring cassette cassettes and, and laboratory cassettes to check set speed and all that kind of stuff. But the acid test is how does it really sound when you play? And if we just a quick quick look back in time, what do we have here? Well, we've got Bob Seeger, we've got Dire Straits, Linda Ronstadt, always a favorite, Crosby, Stills, Nash, and Young when he was still there, Paul McCartney, Kansas, Sammy Hagar, Eddie Money, that's more 80s, Cheap Trick, Van Halen. Van Halen's one of my personal favorites. This is Van Halen 84 because everybody likes a little angel smoking cigarettes, don't they? We also have Journey, another one of my favorites. That's why there's two of them. Another Linda Ronstadt, so you know how she measures up. The Cars, that's also more 80s. And of course, everybody's got to have at least one or two Cat Stevens in their collection, and I think I probably have more than that. Uh, of all of these, the ones I prefer to do testing with most often are either the Van Halen 1984 or the Bob Seger Greatest Hits. Personal preference here. So I think today, we're going to put a little Bob Seger in because who doesn't like Bob Seger in the Silver Bullet Band? Here we have Greatest Hits. He's looking pretty young there, don't you think? I remember that when I saw him the first time. Anyway, unfortunately, due to copyright restrictions, we can't play a whole lot of this because you know what happens. They'll mute the music and I'll get a strike and everybody gets upset. So it'll be short and brief, but it shows that it does play. So you just pop it in. The cassette door is keyed, so you have to put the wide side on the right and you pop it in. The darkness scatters as the lights flash on. They hold one another just a little too long. And we can fast forward. And then you push the rewind button to pop it back out. And we can rewind. And you press the fast forward button to pop out the rewind button. And you can see the red LED light here pointing to the left. And we push both the fast forward and the rewind together. It changes directions. And eject ejects. It's really that simple. If you own one of these, then what you do is, when you're done listening to your Bob Seger, or perhaps you're more of a uh, Frank Sinatra fan, you can store these in here and you can put four of them. And I think it holds just four. Let's make sure. I don't think, yeah, it's just four. It's two and two. So that's pretty good. You can keep the ones in there that you like to listen to all the time. So this is in good working order as I expected it to be since it is brand new. And um, I think it's going to go to a good home and he'll enjoy having it again. Just a brief look and a little bit of testing of a new tone CP95. I hope you found this interesting and perhaps helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up on YouTube because that always helps. There'll be a banner right here that shows you how to subscribe. Go to our YouTube homepage, click on the bell or on the wheel, put in your email address, and every time we post a new video, you'll get a notification and you can watch it. That's all for today. See you on the next video.